the Studio Cuts Podcast with Taylor with WRRV. This is the Studio Cuts Podcast. Hey, it's Taylor from 92.7-96.9 WRRV. And the Studio Cuts Podcast is where we interview artists that were featured on Sunday Studio Cuts, our new music show on WRRV. Today, we're talking with Kay Flay, who just released her new single, Four Letter Words. Where are you at right now? I am in my studio in Los Angeles right now. What are COVID restrictions like over there? Are they still in place? Are they being lifted? Yeah, you know, people are eating outside and doing things outdoors. I mean, obviously, the benefit of having been here in L.A., throughout this entire thing is that it hasn't gotten very cold, which has been <laughs> nice for for seeing people outdoors. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely, you know, everyone's still masked up inside and taking all the precautions, but it's been nice to be able to to see friends outside. And, and most of us at this point are vaccinated, so, you know, it's it's a relief. As you know, just sort of like as we like dip our toes back in the pool it's it's really nice to be able to spend time with a little less anxiety with some of the close with some of the close friends that's great to hear i think for a lot of people it's just a relieving feeling to get a little bit of normalcy back oh my god and you know the other the other part of this i think is we are all sort of in need of re-socialization (laughs) (laughs) just you know just like how to interact and spend time with people like it's kind of nice in a way that we have to take it slow and we have to be in smaller groups because i think there is that kind of like acclimation period we are we are all in right now all right i'm gonna hit you with a little bit of a pop quiz question don't feel like you have to answer this a couple yeah. years back you played for wrrv sessions at newberg brewing company do you remember yeah. anything about the area Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember, well, we had a really, we drove up from New York, and we had a beautiful drive, and it was actually my first time in the area. I had I had lived in, in Brooklyn for, for several years, but I had never been to the Hudson Valley, and I was really astounded by the foliage and just sort of like the lushness of the environment. It was super beautiful, and I, I remember it really well. I'm honestly impressed that you do. <laughs> you know what? I have I have like a crazy memory. I remember, I don't want to say everything because then someone comes at me with like an obscure thing that I have forgotten. But for the most part, um, you know, barring it occurring at like 3 a.m. in Stockholm, I, I pretty much remember everything. <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> You've gotten really into streaming on Twitch. Is this something you've always wanted to do, or did you really just get into it because of the pandemic? Well, really because of the pandemic, you know, we, my manager had begun to have some conversations with them, uh, you know, about this as a possibility. And I think, you know, I'm pretty technologically minded. Um, You know, I I love a lot of the, the... the nitty gritty of like setting things up um, in terms of the live show and audio engineering and production. And so th- that's very much my focus in, in certain ways. And Twitch is sort of a perfect platform if you're, <laughs> if you're interested in that, because it, you know, um, it, it's quite, it, I have to say, I, I think I underestimated what, what a technical undertaking it would be to, record music and produce music live on on Twitch through, kind of through all this different stuff but it's been it's been awesome you know i i was really missing that kind of intimate interaction with an audience and with fans and this has been you know it's certainly different from playing shows but it's been a really it's been a really beautiful experiment and a really beautiful and different way to connect with people because it's it's a lot of time. You know, I think it's what's kind of curious to me is that on Twitch, like the longer you stream, the more engaged people are, which is kind of the hmm. opposite of many other platforms where it's like 
Like, it's on Instagram, so it's got to be, like, under 10 seconds. Otherwise, everyone's <laughs> bored. Um, and this is, you know, this is very much the opposite, which which I think is quite in line with, with my personality in many ways. Like, I love I love long conversations, and I love going on tangents, and I love exploring things. So it's 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 been a really good fit. You've teamed up with a ton of artists recently on songs like Grandson, Ex Ambassadors, Tom Morello, and Arkells. What was it like working with all of them? It's really um, easy, actually. You know, all of those collaborations came about because of a text message. <laughs> because <laughs> we all know each other, you know, and I, and I think... One of the things that always strikes me as kind of funny is how much of, you know, collaboration and cross-pollination occurs because of really casual interactions. You know, like the song uh, Zen that I that I did with Ex Ambassadors and Grandson last year, like Sam, you know, we all live within maybe 15 minutes of each other in Los Angeles. Oh, and wow. we've, uh, you know, I'm... I, like friends, real life friends with, <laughs> with both of them. Um, and, you know, Jordan and I have, a uh, grandson and I have collaborated on a, a bunch of different things. And, uh, yeah, Sam FaceTimed me and was like, hey, I'm working on this, like, song with Jordan, and I don't know, like, I just think it's really cool, and I feel like, would you want to do something or write something and, like, be honest? And I was like, dude, yeah. I was in, I, in fact, it was, like, kind of right at the beginning of COVID. I was in my friend's front yard. We used to do this reading in the front yard on Sundays, uh, early COVID, because we had no idea what to do. We were, like, <laughs> so freaked out and scared that we were like, let's just read books outside and do that for a while. <laughs> and, yeah, he FaceTimed me, and I was like, yeah, of course, I'll, I'm going to go. At the time, I had set up a studio at my friend's, my other friend's dining room. They were out of town. And um, I was like, yeah, I was going to go over to the studio today, maybe anyway. So that sounds great. He sent it to me, and I heard it. I was like, oh, man, I love this. And then I wrote it in maybe 15, 20 minutes and recorded it, and that was it. So, you know, I think often, you know, similarly with the Arkells, like Max and them were in town. Max texted me. He was like, you want to come to the studio? Here's a couple ideas we're working on. And I was like, man, this this one idea, I really, th- th- I'm resonating with this one a lot. Like, let me come in and try some stuff, and we'll see if, like, it makes sense if we're having fun or whatever. And yeah, I came in and wrote and we, you know, we of course then were able to kind of vibe off each other's energy. And then the instrumentation of the song changed because of that. And, you know, so it's, I think a lot of collaboration, at least for me, feels really natural and comes about in a very casual way. And um, same goes for Tom Morello on, on my EP. I just texted Tom. I was like, would you want to play on this? I feel like you would rip. And he was like, oh, yeah, this, yeah, <laughs> I want to do that. Let's do it. <laughs> it's awesome to hear how organic it came about. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know how it is for other artists because obviously I'm just me, but and I'm a pretty casual and, like, open person. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of the ways that – creative projects develop is quite like happenstance and quite organic. And, and, you know, because I think that's also that creates conditions for openness. And when, when you think about like the point of a collaboration or what makes a collaboration successful, I think it is fundamentally openness, you know, to somebody else's ideas and perspective and style. And then in turn, um, you know, them being open and receptive to to yours. Your big song out right now is Four Letter Words. What is this song about? Um, oof. Okay, well, I mean, <laughs> you know, this song, I, I kind of say it, you know, in a sense, like, which is basically like, I'm usually nice. And that's true. I am, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty mild-mannered and nice person like people who meet me are like oh wow you're like you know i often get like i can't believe you're so like friendly and happy your music is is crazy (laughs) (laughs) you know but but i think that actually gets at the crux of this which is like i am usually nice 
but music is the place where I get to say F you, you know, and that's, that's my way of expressing that feeling. And I think, you know, four letter words is written from kind of the, the perspective of being in a relationship and feeling frustrated. And I think we've all had that experience, whether it's romantic relationship, whether it's a work relationship, friendship, whatever, family. Um, and I think for me, the song was such a moment of catharsis and it helped to really shine a light on what the role of music is in my life. And I'm sure you can relate to this and probably, you know, everybody listening that music is this, you know, precious and beautiful, safe place for us to express our frustration and our, our fear and our shame and our anger. And, you know, when we're able to do it in that arena, it's like, okay, <laughs> I got, you know, I got it out of my system and now I can go back to, to being a contributing citizen, but we all have a breaking point, And I think, you know, very often I'm trying to hold back that those feelings that, that I'm uncomfortable with, right? Those feelings of like anger and passion and whatever. And it, it is important to release them. And it is, it is empowering to release them. And I hope, you know, the song I think makes me feel powerful, not in an evil genius way, like in a <laughs> cathartic way. And I, and I hope that it makes other people feel powerful because, you know, we all have that ability to sort of sublimate these chaotic feelings and really reach like our next level, which I think is a really cool thing. A hundred percent. I think you're so right in music being cathartic. People have songs for when they're happy, when they're sad, when they're angry. So you're completely right with that. Yeah. And, you know, during COVID too, it was, it's been such a, a reminder of the role of music for me, which is, you know, I'm on this, this new EP, you know, it's, it's a pretty heavy, um, it's a heavy little body of music sonically and thematically. And I think, you know, it's no coincidence that being being cooped up and cloistered and feeling feeling like I'm not in control of this world, which I very clearly am not. Um, those those feelings I think pushed me to make music that that was so expressive in that way. Speaking of your upcoming EP, what can we expect from it? Well. Um, you can expect, I think, more catharsis. You know, my goal with this with this piece was to create music that gives you energy. So this, like, you put on this EP, and it's like charging your battery. That that's how I would describe it. I think that's the feeling. I, I mean, I'm hoping people get that feeling. I've heard for the people who've listened to it already. That's kind of what they've reflected back to me is like they listen to it and they're they're energized and they actually feel like okay I can I can take care of things I can like I mean you know I got this like <laughs> I'm strong I'm powerful and that you know I think I think a lot of us are in need of that right now I know I am and that's that's the main thing I think people can expect but yeah I've got um two collaborations one with tom morello as, as you mentioned before and another with travis barker who um i was just saying is, is the busiest man in rock and roll um <laughs> and he smashed it and again like you know both tom and travis are known i think in many ways for their energy and what they you know they create they create this kinetic energy <laughs> in their music and it was it was very inspiring to to work with them and feel that. Are there any plans to tour this year? Are you part of any festival lineups? So we've got some dates on the books. Um, uh, I'll be out for a little bit this summer, and again, not everything's announced um, quite yet. But uh, yes, I'm out this summer. I'm opening up uh, some shows for Lewis the Child, who's a, a group that I love and I've collaborated with also on a few different things. Um, I am playing Riot Fest 
Fest this fall and a couple other festivals. Uh, but the main thing I'm gearing up for is a headline run top of next year. Um, and yeah, just, you know, preparing. Prepare. So I'm like Rocky. You know, I'm like running upstairs and stuff like that. I'm getting, I'm like, it's actually funny. I'm doing, my friend is, is a, an ama- amazing yoga instructor and she's training me to like have crazy strength. So I'm like, I'm ready to, I'm ready. I'm ready to get out there. I'm ready for it. <laughs> my last question for you. If someone were to come to your city, what is the one thing they have to have to do? Oh, my Lord. Uh, Okay, so someone came to Los Angeles. What is the one thing they have to do? I mean, on some level, I would say, and this is sort of a California answer, I would say dip your toes in the Pacific Ocean. I think it's very, I think it's very powerful to stand on the edge of a continent, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Whoa, this is the, this is the edge. Like, the next thing is Asia. And like, you know, and it's so far away. And I think having that sense of perspective as a human is very humbling and important and not in a way where you need to be like fatalistic and hopeless, but in a way where you can feel very connected to your small but important role on on this planet Earth uh, before we like apparently colonize Mars. So I don't know, maybe I'll have different... (laughs) Uh, different advice once once Elon Musk's plans have all come to fruition. But uh, yeah, I would say I would say dip your toes in the Pacific. I gotta say, I asked that question to everyone on the Studio Cuts podcast, and that might be my favorite answer so far. Oh, that's awesome! And you know what's <laughs> funny too? I'm not really like an ocean beach person. I live pretty far. I mean, I, I live on kind of the other side of LA so it's you know it's like an hour, 45 minutes or an hour for me to get to the beach so I don't go there a ton but I, I can very I can very clearly sort of like imagine the feeling of what it's like every time I do and just knowing like yeah I'm at the I'm at the edge <laughs> there's no I can't I cannot go further <laughs> well thank you so much for hanging out with me and the Studio Cuts podcast Oh, my gosh. I appreciate it. Thank you for chatting. And, yeah, really, really looking forward to being back out there and hope to see all of you soon. Make sure to check out Four Letter Words by Kay Flay and watch out for when her new EP, Inside Voices, drops. And don't forget to catch Sunday Studio Cuts, a new music show featuring all of the up-and-coming alternative music hosted by me every Sunday at 10 p.m. on 92.7-96.9 WRRV. Join us next week as we interview another up-and-coming alternative artist on the Studio Cuts podcast.